Now, a few months ago, I wrote a really in-depth review on my blog about double roller blinds because I absolutely love how they offer privacy and daylight without the need for nets. So today, I'm gonna to put that in a video and show you how they work and how to fit them. This is not sponsored in any way, and you can buy these from many different blind companies. And on that note, the fittings for them do seem to vary from brand to brand, so you can't just watch one video and rely on it. Some people are selling them on Amazon where the blind attachments are stacked up vertically. That might be a better solution for the depth of your window. I bought these from blinds to go and they come in a corner style. And these ones are 10 centimeter deep, but once the rollers are attached, you've got to add another centimeter because they stick out a little bit. And the reason I ordered them from this company is because I needed to buy a lot and I found them the cheapest, but I'll moan about this forever. I don't like how they don't sell added insurance, which others offer for about a tenner, where a blind company will send you a replacement at no extra cost if you've got your measurements wrong. But there's usually a clause in that that it's for up to two or three blinds. I'm sure at the time they said I'd still get a 50% discount on a replacement, but it's still a cost you want to avoid. And all of that could change in the future. Anyway, let's show you the blinds because I do love them. It's made of two blinds. You've got a natural coloured mesh one that sits closer to the window or at the bottom of the fitting and that allows daylight in but you can't see in from outside while it's light outside which we never open. There's just no need. But at night time we need the top ones, that's the colour that you chose and these ones are grey blackout blinds. Now the key thing I needed to work around was avoiding the window's handles. So I used a wooden offcut that was slightly deeper as a gauge, or you could use something like a piece of card, and I'd hold it in the corners and mark where the screw holes are. And I drilled with an SDS hammer drill as its masonry. If it's plasterboard, you'll need a special plasterboard fitting which isn't my favourite thing to do, I must admit, because there's a few rubbish ones out there. There's also screw holes above it, but I found screwing it to the wall was sufficient enough. Then it used roll plugs and screws to screw on the brackets. And time to hang both of the blinds. The next style one goes on first, then the blackout one last. Now, if you found your measurements are slightly off, you might be able to slightly bend the brackets inwards, as we've done in the past. And one of the blinds where it was just a little bit too tight, we were able to remove the ends and trim down slightly with a hacksaw. And that was without the need of cutting the fabric itself. But you are doing that at your own risk. But when you're ordering lots of blinds for a house, which can rack up occasionally, you can make a mistake. And that's why I think it's important that blind companies offer add-on insurance. Anyway, I hope you found that useful, but I've talked about many different blinds, perfect fit blinds, upcycling old roller blinds, and probably others I can't remember. But anyway, hopefully I'll see you soon with an upcoming DIY project.